Catch Amazing Minds Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 20 hours Central African time on YouTube, Google, Apple, and Spotify for podcasters. Zambia's first late night show. Sing it in uh, Katanga province. In Katanga? Yeah. It was Zaire. a great experience. Yeah. Otherwise, how I are you I just wanted doing, to sir? see it from there. I'm doing good, bro. How are you doing? I'm a bit tired because of uh, the trip yesterday. Just came back. Yeah. But uh, actually, I was wondering, will he make it? Okay. <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you were sending me quarterly updates. Ah, uh, no, we, we've reached here now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just wanted you to know in case of anything so that. You say, ah, but this guy, he was texting me until we reached this place. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, how was your trip? It was good. Just tell us, mm. but it was very enjoyable. And the game was enjoyable. The game, eh? I stopped concentrating on AFCON mm. once Zambia came on Zambia? <laughs> okay. For me, AFCON is Zambia. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand <laughs> you. And probably that was the best part for you, but uh, you probably missed the best part if you're a soccer fan. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. So, I'm not really. I know. I'm just saying. If there's anyone out there who's a soccer fan and they stop watching after Zambia, they probably missed the best part. Yeah. Or yeah. well, the games after are quite good because yeah, they've been very intense actually. Because the 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 competition is getting more exactly, and the stakes are higher. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's getting uh, tougher. I can't wait for the semifinals. So now we are going into the semifinals. Semi-finals. Who's playing semi-finals? So we have got four teams. We have South, of course four teams. They're the semi-finals. <laughs> so we have South Africa. We have uh, Cote d'Ivoire. Yeah. We have Congo. Our Congo, our very own Congo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And we have uh, what's the other team? So Cote d'Ivoire, South Africa, DRC, and Nigeria. I heard Cape Verde was playing South Africa. Who won? Was Cape Verde playing? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was South, South Africa. Af- South Africa won. Yeah. It? Yeah, South Africa won. Oh, and Nigeria. Won penalties. Nigeria is the fourth team? Yeah, Nigeria is the fourth team. Who do you think Nigeria. will win of the four teams? Okay, mm, this one is tough. As I said, I never want to be an analyst. <laughs> and <laughs> you know, an all anal- the teams... Analysis. An analysis. <laughs> <laughs> all the teams that I thought would do good, they're out now. Uh, the last team was Cape Verde, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but right now, I'm, 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 I'm rooting for DRC. DRC. Yeah, because of the atmosphere that I had when I watched the game with the guys. <laughs> yeah, so I'm rooting for DRC. Yeah. Although I'm thinking uh, South Africa is looking strong as well. All of them are strong sides, I should say. Mm, apparently, yeah. South Africa was avenging us when they played Cape Verde. I don't know if you heard of that. They were like, we want to show you that Southern Africa, uh-huh. you, you beat Zambia, something like that. I don't know. Okay, yeah, but Cape Verde didn't play, never played Zambia. I may have my information <laughs> wrong. <laughs> anyway, good to have yeah. you back. Maybe, I don't know, maybe the semifinals are South Africa versus Ivory Coast. Maybe they must have, they might avenge us. I, I don't know what, what they're pairing out. I heard of some avenging, but Anyway. Okay. Yeah, it's yeah. possible because Cote d'Ivoire was very happy that we lost against Morocco because that, that was the, their lifeline. Yeah. If we had like a draw game or something or a win. Then they would, would be have, out and yeah, we would. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And now they went through and against all odds, they're in the semifinals. <laughs> <laughs> they went through hanging by a thread. Yeah. Supporting the other team against Zambia. <laughs> <laughs> 
it becomes bad when you have to support uh-huh. a, another team. Yeah. Like yeah. Yeah, and you know the dynamics were interesting because now this this tournament is happening in Cote d'Ivoire. Oh, that's so, where they're playing from. You know, yes. it should been so oh Exactly. God. So, you know, yeah. uh when we were playing Morocco, it's like we were playing the hosts. Because yeah. the the stadium was packed with uh, Cote d'Ivoire fans who wanted us to lose. Yeah. yeah, and the fans really play a role. They call them the twelfth man, actually. Ah, so yeah. it's like morale and exactly. Oh. Do the players know what time it is as they are playing, or do they know the scores? That's a good question. So uh, uh, the scores, of course. <laughs> are they able to? Do they? I think they know the time because they have they, those displays, but is, they are, don't pay attention to the time. That's it. So are the scores written somewhere in the stadium, yes, yes. or they just know mentally like, oh, they, guys are They're written shabby. somewhere in the stadium, but then not all stadium have got that facility. Not all stadia. So, you know, we've got these small stadiums. I like that correction you made. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not all stadia have got that. So, some people, they just keep it in their mind. But if you're playing football, I'm sure you know the scores. The time you might miss it, but the scores you will. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm. All right, great. So, you're welcome to Amazing Minds, Zambia's first late night show. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, hit that bell and share. Mondays are for political discussions. Wednesdays are for the educative segment. And Fridays are for Bible talks. So... The Wednesday show has been a little bit uh, under construction, but we are coming, we are bringing to you this month, we're in February now, right? Yeah. yeah. This month, we're bringing to you some tax education uh, on the Wednesday show. Uh, Bible talks, we're still doing gifts of the spirit. I hope you're following that. I just did a Bible talks on Friday uh, titled, um, where did God come from? Check that one out if you haven't. Yes, so today is Monday. If you're not subscribed, please get subscribing. Show is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify, as well as YouTube. 20 hours, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Yeah, so today we have a number of things we're discussing. Well, not too many things, but a number of things. To begin with, the cholera, uh, I don't know whether it has qualified for to be called an epidemic or... Oh, yeah, it has, man. It, it has, eh? Yeah. You think so? What's the difference? I don't know. We'll have to do our research before we get <laughs> But the, the cholera outbreak. So yeah. we'll give you updates on the cholera outbreak and then we'll talk about the hikes in fuel prices by ERB. And lastly... I'm sorry we'll, to cut you because I think that this is this just a thought that has come. Yeah. I think that this is the worst that we've had in a long time. Uh, cholera. cholera? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Def- yeah. I, I was just... In a very, very long yeah. time, actually. Yeah. Mm. And the, the funny thing is the last outbreak we had, 2017, 2018, mm-hmm. we only had not more than 200 deaths. Yes. Yeah. And we had the soldiers in town and all Exactly. Those Infecting <laughs> people, wrongdoers, by, by, by throwing them, them into the rubbish. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah. So um, lastly, we'll discuss Edgar Lungo calling for early elections with a team of opposition leaders rallying behind him. I think today will be an interesting show. What do you think? I think so. I think it will be an interesting show. <laughs> Yeah. He had a lot to say. Mm-hmm. He had a lot to say. So to begin with, uh, last update was given on Friday, I believe. So far, we have a total of 616 deaths. Wow, that's a mm, jump. That's a lot. That's a jump from the last outbreak we had. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, 20, that's a huge 2017, jump. 2017, 2018, because it was less than 200. Yeah. So the jump, Wow. Even though now numbers are reducing, right? Yeah, yeah, that's that's something that we should uh, note uh, for this outbreak. Uh, this is like the <clears throat> the least numbers we're getting. This is why I'm thinking that they're not giving us daily updates. Oh, because now it's no longer the need for a daily update is no longer. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, but it's a good thing that we're seeing these numbers go down. Uh, what do you think could uh, we could attribute this to? I guess. Uh, Dissemination of information, people are getting education, yeah, Yeah. education as well as witnessing deaths. Mm -hmm. I saw a story Mm. of a lady that had been looking for a husband. I don't know if you came across that. I saw that and then found out that he was that he he was dead and buried. Yeah, Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, that was really sad. Yeah, very sad. Yeah, to be looking for your spouse and realize, ah, no, he died and Mm. he's been buried. That must have been very painful. Yeah, must have been very painful. So. Hero Stadium is has become a hub also, for yeah, okay. has become a hub for the infected. That's why they are being taken. What are they calling it? The um, cholera center. Exactly, cholera center. So we had a doctor run us through 
or won't show you the whole thing, but run us through the... Yeah, just by the way, before you play that video, my yeah. own theory of the numbers going down, well, it could be one of the reasons, what you just said, the education could be one of the main reasons as well. Yeah. I'm thinking that the vaccine as well could have done... Uh, Oh, job. the vax! Yeah. I completely forgot about that. Yeah, vaccine. we had more than one million. We had more than a million people get vaccinated, mm. and in the hotspots. Mm. Yeah, so I think that has helped. But you know, this should not in any way uh, tell us that uh, this cholera is no longer a problem. Yeah, yeah. This is just a temporal thing. Yeah, yeah. It's just a temporal relief, so to say. I think we generally need an overhaul of a lot of. Um, a lot of living conditions. The mm -hmm. way the way certain communities are living needs to be changed totally. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know whether it's something we can do within the space of this year. No, we can't do it in one year, of course. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, the president talked about this and he talked about the solutions. They had solutions. They had decisions that were supposed to take. So we'll be here to hold no more to No more shallow waters. Yes, no more shallow wells, although the shallow wells are still there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll take them to account. Because as well, people need water. Yeah. yeah so. By the way, Edgar Lungo had some interesting things to say about cholera and the UPND will show you the video after we show you the run through at Hero Stadium. We just want you to be a bit aware of exactly what things look like at, at Heroes. So mm -hmm. check it out. Uh, when we receive the patient from this entrance, we triage them to see the level of dehydration, to see how dry they are. So depending on the level of dehydration, then now we take them to, to the bed. So behind me here is a bed, a cholera bed. If you see, you can notice this is a special type of bed with a hole in the middle so that the patients can use their feet. And below that, uh, that hole is a bucket, which we call this two buckets. And there's also another bucket by the bed, beside the bed, which is called the vomitor's bucket. So this is just used for vomiting, the other one is for the diarrhea. Uh, if you look at this bed, this is one of the beds that was made by the local carpenters when we were just opened on the 4th of uh, January here at Heroes. And then next to this bed there is this drip stand. So this is where we put our drips when the patients need the drip. And these were also made by our local carpenters, they are wooden. This is just showing you uh, where we collect the patient's information and the treatment plans. So this is where we report so that the next person who's coming is when we're doing handovers, they can see what has been done and the status of the patient. Did you know that that's what cholera beds, beds look like? Yeah, of course, I saw some pictures before this. Yeah, yeah, but it's just interesting for her to just run us through. Yeah. Yeah. First time seeing okay. a cholera bed, I didn't know that oh, that's, okay. that's the whole arrangement. Okay. Yeah, it must. Yeah. So, so getting sick of cholera mm. kind of reads you of a lot of your... Of course, of course. Yeah. I mean, look at the bed, so uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah, there's a picture that that was trending. I think that's when I saw it for the first time. Yeah, probably. There's a picture that was trending. It was showing like the, the place was looking actually a bit wet, like maybe they were spraying or maybe there was some rain that, I don't know, mm. could be spraying or something. Yeah. I hope that maybe we can we can, we can can have that picture later on. And it was it up. Heroes as well? It was Heroes, yeah. Can you guys find that and send it to us? Okay. Yeah, so uh, that was... Uh, the situation, that's the situation at Hero Stadium. We can see that they are working with local camp carpenters <laughs> as well. Uh, was to, that necessary to mention? That they're working with local camp yeah. carpenters. Yeah, she mentioned it twice. I mean, was it necessary for her to mention? For, I think so. Why? Uh, it shows the collective effort that is not just the medical people, but okay. different aspects of community, <clears throat> different sectors of the community are coming together to... Yeah, yeah, you that's know, true. The thought that came Even to the my drip, mind. the drip stand uh -huh. is made by local carpenters. Okay. Because ordinarily in hospitals, mm. they just have to be what? Sorry. Please. <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm just thinking that uh, when I saw the bed and her talking about this local carpenters, carpenters who did this. That word is a bit of a... Carpenters. <laughs> Even I was. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the only thing that I thought to myself was like, oh, that's that bed looks like anyone can make it. Anyway, not to take out anything from the local carpenters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah anyway i think it's the appreciation of the collective effort to yeah, know that okay. they are contributing somehow to mm -hmm. the yeah that's uh, i didn't look at it from that point of view yeah and so edgar lungo had his things to say ish he talked <laughs> this past week <laughs> yeah he talked anyway before i give you my comments so he spoke about cholera yeah he did okay, speak about okay. cholera but before i give you my comments you Check it out. The past can only be a reference point. But if you choose not to work with the past, that's it. But I am telling you that the corridor was being fixed. 
But when the man came, he fixed the fight against Corella, and that's why we are now. So, what do you want me to do? I can only wait until I hear from you that this is how we are going to help government, the people, and so on. And as we go into the future, the people who helped bring UPND into power, who are very disappointed with how they've been betrayed by UPND. You know, one thing that strikes me the most about politics mm. is just how politicians mm. can really throw a jab at each other. <laughs> like they don't care about how is my friend going to feel about this or yeah. how is this going to look like they'll hit you where it hurts. Right now, we know there's a cholera crisis. And to be honest, it's not the president's fault that we have a cholera crisis. We may attribute blame to the president for how the crisis is managed, uh -huh. but the, big, the starting of the whole crisis is not necessarily his fault. But to be honest, heavy is the crown that wears, heavy is the head that uh -huh. wears the crown. Yeah, and by the way, I don't know if this could be surprising, uh, HH was named the, the Sadiq Cholera Champion or something. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Did you, you didn't see that? No, I didn't see that. Do you yeah. think he's maybe handling Maybe someone it? can put it up. Maybe we can, we can find yeah, maybe like you guys, a screenshot uh, or something. Uh, sorry, we are a bit... <laughs> Yeah, anyway. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. do you think he's handling it better than the PF did? So, uh, that's very that's a very interesting question. Because when you look at the number of deaths, then probably not. That's the thing. How do we measure mm -hmm. how well PF handled it in contrast to how these guys are handling it? There, I so think now, there are many factors. I also don't agree with the way Galung is coming out like he, he had the solution. Yeah. Because he's still a Zambian. Because I, our schools People were are still dying. closed. Exactly. Yeah. So if if really he had a, a a proper solution, we wouldn't see cholera again. I can tell you. And oh, this yeah. solution because the PF came up with a document. It should be the cholera fight something something. They came up with a document. Actually, that document uh, it was a collaboration of many countries. Yeah. Yeah. So they came up with a document that had all these things of getting rid of all these uh, illegal settlements providing clean drinking water for the people. A proper plan that if you could see it, you see that, okay, this will, will get rid of the cholera. Mm. Yeah. But that didn't happen. They didn't By follow By the way, through. are we the only country in Central Southern Africa no. facing this challenge? No. Right now, actually, Zimbabwe is having an outbreak. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Just recently, we had Malawi with an outbreak. Mm. Actually, I think it hit Malawi more So this is not a Zambian problem, as per se. This is a sub-Saharan problem. No, we can't even say that because cholera has been around. You know that, right? Yeah. Yeah, cholera has been to the US. Cholera killed a lot of people in America. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so, when was that? That's a long time ago. Yeah. So that's so the in, thing. In recent times, it has become. A... Exactly. In recent times, it's a preserve, so to say, of <laughs> poor countries. <laughs> yeah. We have outbreaks in places like India. Yeah. Yeah. So the people that have gotten rid of this, uh, like in the US, have gotten rid, rid of this thing and it has never come back. Of course, we still have cholera, but they never have outbreaks. Mm. The way they dealt with this, they dealt with this they, with it comprehensively. Yeah. They had to take on the actual uh, the actual actions that uh, we're afraid of taking on, yeah. which even now the president talked about. So the PF did the same thing. Them, they even produced a document, which is still there right now. Yeah. So if the current government wants to use it, they can, yeah. because it's a government document. Second, we heard from the president who said it from his own mouth what they want to do to make sure that this thing goes forever. Mm. So, if there's a there's will, they are going to do it. Mm. But it's not easy. So we doubt. I doubt personally if they are going to do it. What PF did is the same thing that has happened now. The vaccine. That's all. Yeah. When that outbreak came, so immediately first they 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 got rid of the people in town. I don't know if that helped. I know that the vaccine helped. Yeah. When the vaccine came, the numbers went down. And you know how these vaccines work. So it will work during a long period of time. And then after some time, it will stop being effective. Mm. And that's why in my own, in my, with my own theory, that's why we have this resurgence of the outbreak. Yeah. Because now that vaccine that was given is no longer working. Mm. So if the UPND also, they, they think that, the, because the numbers are going to go down. Yeah. And we're going to have almost zero cases. Yeah. So if the UPND take that as the end of cholera forever, we're going to have this problem probably after the UPND are even gone. Yeah, and because then the UPND are going to come and say about the next president. Exactly. We dealt with this. Yes, exactly. But they have fought the fight against Colin. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a a very good play of words. Yeah. We we, we dealt with cholera, but he has he yeah. has dealt with the fight against cholera. Yeah, I totally disagree with Edgar yeah, Lungu, by the way. Smart play of words. That. Smart play of words. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, one thing is, I think Edgar Lungu is a smart 
man. I think he knows how to talk. I, okay, I don't know. Smart, smart. I don't know. Yeah, he I, could I, be, could I, be I charismatic. Think, I think generally he's got a very. Mm. He's likable. He talks in ways that people would like. Yeah, of course, but that could be a con man. Yeah, it doesn't always <laughs> have to be that you are smart to do that. Aren't con men smart? Well, I don't consider them as smart per se. Yeah, <laughs> I consider them as con men. I mean, for you to successfully con someone, uh-huh. is, don't you need some level of intelligence? Uh, anyway, <laughs> I, I don't think so. You, don't <laughs> you just need to have. You just uh, need to be stupid. <laughs> something like that. You just have to have come, come a criminal mentality. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's why they study what, what they call it: uh, behavioral psychology, mm-hmm. uh, clinical psychology, mm. the mindset of a criminal. Mm-hmm. They say it's a it's a whole unique mind on its own. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's not what we're discussing <laughs> Sorry today. Sorry for another day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, ERB hikes the fuel prices. Uh, the price of petroleum products has been adjusted upwards, with petrol having an upward adjustment of thirty four point nineteen per liter. Wow. Uh, wow. <laughs> we never expected this. <laughs> what I can say is wow. Me neither. <laughs> you know, just a couple of years ago when PF was still in power, mm. uh, fuel was at 17 kwacha. Yeah. And we heard rumors. Mm-hmm. There were simply rumors mm-hmm. that fuel is going to be hiked to 20 kwacha. It didn't happen, mm. but it was a rumor then. I remember how the environment in the country was, how everyone felt. What would it be like to buy fuel for 20 kwacha? Lo and behold, just a few years later, <laughs> 20 kwacha would be a gift to us. 20 kwacha would literally be a gift. If they made it 20 kwacha, I'm sure the they UPND would bounce back, no doubt. Ah, definitely. <laughs> 20 kwacha would be a gift, yet we were afraid of it at some point. Yeah. Anyway, the, fri- the price of petroleum products has been adjusted upwards, with petrol having an upward adjustment of 34.19 0.19 per liter from 29.98 per liter, while diesel has been adjusted from 29.96 per liter to 32.15 per liter. Energy Regulation Board Chairperson Reynolds Boa attributed the increase to the depreciation of the quacha. He said the price review will be effective midnight today, which was uh, yesterday, I believe, or was this the day before? No, this was on uh, Saturday? Wednesday. Oh, this was Wednesday. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bowen noted that during the period under review, the prices of oil in the international market, on the international market, were, li- were re- <laughs> relatively stable. <laughs> <laughs> the depreciation of the quacha has resulted in an increase of the domestic wholesale and palm prices of petroleum products, with the exception of kerosene. The price of kerosene has been maintained on account of sufficient no- national stock, he said. Mr. Boa said the prices of fuel, diesel and jet A1 have been adjusted to 34.19 per liter, 32.15 per liter and 32.69 per liter, respectively. He said the price of kerosene has been maintained at 20.44 uh, per liter. Based on the foregoing, the palm prices for February 2024 are as follows. Oh, we just gave you the figures. Mr. Boa said, the board remains committed to fostering an open and transparent environment in the fuel pricing process, ensuring that the public and all stakeholders have access to relevant and comprehensive information. Yeah, I've noticed how you were just saying 32.15, 29.96, and not saying whether it's quacha or what. Oh, yeah. All prices are in quacha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I well, think that's the reason why you found it. Uh, the, yeah, the the good thing is it, it was up on the screen, so yeah, yeah of they course, can, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you know, actually the, the correction I want to give you is that eh, you are saying 34.19. So this is money. This is 34.19 quacha. You no. don't have to follow those you, rules in mathematics. You think so? Yeah, you are talking about money. So it's 32 points. You know I'm a counter, right? I do, yes. That's why I'm telling you this. <laughs> yeah, because I know how you guys are obsessed with saying it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so anyway, fuel prices have hiked beyond what we ever imagined yeah. they would hike to, especially given the promises we were uh, given yes. before. HH, actually, I think that was in 2020. Yeah. He posted, I think it was on Facebook. He posted on X, which was Twitter then. Yeah. And he tabulated everything. And yeah. gave us all the expenses that and are involved in the fuel supply came chain. To five quarter. <laughs> he gave us all the all the all the processes and all the expenses that are in the supply chain. Yeah. And he also gave suggestions of what he can take out 
to make the pure cheaper. He seemingly gave a very intre- a very intelligent argument. Yeah. At that time, honestly, when I saw that post, I was like, uh, he's got a point. It made sense. Yeah. But now, where has the, that mathematics, those formulas gone? He was suggesting uh, removing the middleman f- for mm-hmm. starters, mm. reducing VAT from 16% to 8%, which mm. is to slash it in half. Mm. Uh, the levies as well, he would reduce and remove some. Uh, yeah. So, so, but what, what happened? Do you know? Uh, well, subsidies, I guess. So, but, but didn't he know about this? Didn't he have that plan? Because he knew about our debt situation. Honestly, speaking, HH himself is the one who was telling us that we're in a very serious debt the, crisis. The, I, honestly speaking, that's a question I can't answer. I don't know what has happened because even when they began to give us prices mm. per month and, mm. and then per quarter eventually, mm. what they told us is mm. we are simply But they're still to giving us per month, by the way. Oh, they're giving us per month. Yeah, it's only that for the past two months, but you, you like maybe what you are saying is what they want to do. Because like for the past, for January, for December, I think even for November, yeah. there was no change. Yeah. But they came out and announced every month. Yeah, but the assumption they, or rather they, what they gave us mm. was that we'll begin giving you prices on a monthly basis mm-hmm. in order to show you the progression of how well we are paying the people we owe Yeah, in terms of suppliers. Mm. Because remember, they had exempted suppliers from paying VAT mm-hmm. at some point because they were being owed too much money. Mm-hmm. So they said fuel prices have increased because suppliers are no longer uh, paying VAT. Mm-hmm. So you are you are kind of covering that cost. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I don't know how far we've gone with that. We're not. And not really- only that, they also mentioned that they want to have the the monthly thing because they want it to be like cost reflective. They want it to reflect the the change in the exchange rate. They wanted to reflect the changes in the the prices of international uh, oil, oil yeah, market. Exactly, yeah. So, but still, it doesn't seem like they are following it intelligently, like they told us. Yeah, it's. It seems like it's a poli- The whole thing is a political thing. Yeah, if they were, if we could see what's his name, Stu- Stumbeko Sokotani. Yeah. If we could see him as often as we saw him when they were just voted in. And he gives us a comprehensive breakdown, like he did before, when he suggested that <laughs> we don't need to drive. Yeah. So anyway, <laughs> why are youths complaining? They don't have cars. Don't. <laughs> so anyway, if he could come back and give us more suggestions on a monthly basis, as he did before, then maybe we would understand why the prices are the way they are. But for now, we are left in the dark. All we still know. Is that the youth don't drive? <laughs> yeah, because you know it's this thing might look simple to some people. Yeah, but this is what Zambians are looking for. Because once you have high fuel prices, you have high cost of doing business. Everything yeah. goes up. Do you, do you know electricity, inflation is coming back? Electricity to us. is high right now, and I don't yes. know whether they told us that they've hiked the prices. Because <laughs> they told us they did. Yeah, but they, they told us they are going to be doing it in phases. Because some of us are just shocked. <laughs> ah. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> they told us that they were going to be doing it in phases, but they didn't tell us that now we've started. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it was just... So imagine fuel prices are high. Mm. Uh, electricity prices are high. The dollar itself mm. is... Mm. Something uh, else. Yeah, it's something yeah. else. And talk about commodities and food. How much... Do you remember we used to buy sugar for 12 kwacha at some mm-hmm. point? Mm. Sugar is now 70 kwacha. That's bad. So I wonder how the average household in Zambia is keeping up. Honestly speaking, one thing HH seemed to be was compassionate and empathetic with the Zambian people. He said, PF, how are Zambians surviving? <laughs> yeah. That was his language. Mm. So we would ask. Now the, the language question. has changed to tighten your belts. No, tighten your belts. <laughs> no, eat this. The suggestions of what we should <laughs> eat and what we should drive. You no. don't say. You are the one who you said can't be you can. in Zambian driving a Rolls Royce. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't my <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, but anyway, you know, this has hit us and it has hit the average Zambian. Everywhere I go, people are complaining about the high cost of living. Yeah. Everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So hey, even landlords are becoming understanding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not all of them. <laughs> <laughs> so things are quite bad. Things are quite high and yeah, see, can you guys see I'm sweating? We can't even pay for the air con. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, if you like the content, press that subscribe button, that like button as well. Yeah, uh, subscriptions alone on YouTube are decorations. Mm. If, like you a notification hit, bell. if you don't hit the notification bell. Mm. 
Yeah, so moving on. Former President Edgar Lungu, alongside opposition leaders, has addressed questions about his potential candidacy in the 2026 election. Before we proceed, mm. what, what, what are your thoughts on this? On what? On, on, on his addressing okay. the issue of so, candidacy. I see. <laughs> or the issue of candidacy? Yeah. No, Ed Galungu is just playing games. Do you think there's a chance he could come back? He will come back. You oh, you so? mean he could rule again? Yeah. People could vote for him? Yeah. I can't rule that away. Yeah. I can't make that mistake. Yeah. Yeah. If elections came to Dan, we have got Ed Galungu and HH. And I don't like saying this because I'm a leader of some sort to some people. Yeah. Some people listen to me. Yeah. I wouldn't vote today. You will, you, elections you'll, see, to... you'll, see, you'll sit it out. Yes, I'll do something <laughs> else that to benefit my own self. And between a rock and a hard place. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that he can come back to power, that is for the Zambians to decide. Yeah, as, and as you he know, says anyway. Yeah, and yeah. you know, Zambians, <laughs> Zambians vote for a lot of other reasons. Yeah. For whatever reasons. <laughs> I can tell you that I convinced some people on the queue. Yeah. And I didn't even want to say it this yeah but i convinced some people on the queue of voting they didn't know who to vote for i say i convinced people and they voted otherwise yeah there are some people you remember that we had the uh an internet interruption especially with social media yes. that same day under the draconian government of the regime exactly of the patriotic front yeah we shouldn't forget this is the, the these are the leaders that we are talking about when ed garung mm -hmm. they are the ones who didn't want people to know what's happening around yeah we didn't know what they wanted to do yeah but what i wanted to tell you is that on the queue while we are voting people noticed ah, facebook and that's why i thought that was a very down move for lack of a better term <laughs> Yeah, because right there at the queue, people started changing their mind. Yeah. Say, ah, Uganda. Since there was some Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. That was a very that's a, a, that was a very down down move that had happened in Zimbabwe as well. How oh, yeah. do you, how do you do that while people are voting? Yes, you see. <laughs> so a lot of people change their mind on the queue. Yeah. So that tells you uh, what level of uh, or like what what reasons people have for voting. Yeah. Yeah. People vote for people because they think that they're handsome. Yeah, yeah, I, and I don't mind that. I mean, it's a democratic <laughs> right, as much as to vote it sounds for stupid. Men. Yeah, as, as much as it sounds stupid, but I mean, it's a democratic <laughs> right. No one can stop them. So my point is that Ed Galungu, it's possible he could come back. Yeah, because right now the UPND is working against themselves with yeah. what with what we are seeing right now. Yeah, yeah, we are not seeing the results. I don't know if they're obsessed with this long term plan, which we cannot even see, because. Mm. Even if we we have this long term plan that will benefit us in the future, at least we're supposed to be seeing where it's going. Yeah. Now we're not seeing that. Yeah. The debt restructuring is still hanging in the balance. Yeah. I think. And they tell us we are facing problems because of the debt. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, I, I'm sorry I went there, but yeah. Ed Galungu, yes, he could come back. People for, could for vote me, for him. I feel like make one thing easy at least. If you're going to make electricity so high, and you're going to make food so high and the dollar is just crazy you can't control that make fuel cheap uh -huh. make one thing like let people have a what you call that where people have a breathing space uh -huh. like somewhere they breathe from somewhere they release pressure from uh -huh. because an outlet, a, an outlet. Uh -huh. yeah because you know the problem is eh, we're having all this this exponential growth in the prices of commodities and stuff like yeah. that but our salaries people's salaries uh, stagnant. Yeah. And that's why I don't really like the comparisons. No. In Southern Africa, we are the cheapest with fuel. Allah. Yeah, but Allah. we have the lowest uh, that, salaries. <laughs> those comparisons are PF comparisons. Yeah. We so have me, the I'm lowest, surprised lowest to see salaries. them now. Now. During the European. Those when, are PF comparisons. The, they used to argue against them. When they <laughs> those, those are comparisons that don't have basis. Yeah. People don't even have, understand simple things like uh, purchasing power parity. They might not understand their... Ooh. Mr. Chof, you're being an economist there. <laughs> <laughs> Purchase power parity. <laughs> yeah, they, they might not understand the the the, the monetary pol policy, mm -hmm. monetary policies. Calm down. <laughs> they might not understand <laughs> their monetary policy regimes, for instance. Yeah. So it's it, it's it's uh it's flawed to to compare prices, especially in dollars. Mm. And you are saying that no, you we are not so bad. And unfortunately, I heard this from the board chairperson of ERB himself. Yeah. Saying we're not so bad. No, clearly he's a, and he's a scientist. To the other yeah, he's, he's an engineer. He's a scientist. He's not an, an economist. Yeah. He has no 
Yeah, mm. because these are simple things. Yeah. You just have to me I'm not an economist, <laughs> but at least you understand. <laughs> because I read. Kuba sharp if into it. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> Update yourself. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Lungu said he will only run if it is the people's will, stating I cannot impose myself on the people, but if they impose me on the ballot paper, who am I to say no? The former president, now part of a newly formed opposition movement, expressed concerns about the current state of Zambia under the United Party for National Development. He, hi- he highlighted the movement's goal of saving the country from what they term an undeclared state of emergency and responding to question about the national debt accumulated during his tenure, Mr. Lungu deferred responsibility, citing that he is not currently in charge. He urged the current administration to address the economic challenges, saying, if people say continue, I will continue. If they say no, we will choose someone for the ballot. The opposition movement consisting of seven political leaders aims to address issues such as the diminishing democratic space and rising millimeter prices. United Liberal Party leader Sakwiba Skota, speaking on behalf of the movement, called for unity among those sharing similar concerns, inviting like-minded individuals to join their efforts in improving the economy. I always appreciate how Opposition parties, when things seem to be getting bad, always <laughs> alliances join forces. <laughs> they always join forces only to betray each other at the very last minute. Yeah. Ah, no, that guy who are working with him, Daba <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so. Yeah, you know, these guys, the, the opposition, they are also, to me, this shows that they like in principle. Yeah. They are, they are playing politics. And they talk about real problems. Yeah. But they're playing politics. Politics of the belly, by the way. Yes. Ed Galongo, to a great extent, is the reason why we're in this situation. Yeah. And he deferred responsibility. He said, oh, I know. Yes. We left yes. it, but I'm not the one in power. <laughs> really? <laughs> Ed Galongo is part of the main reason why in this See why problems. I say he's a smart mouth. He's not. I mean, he's got, we can see it. He's got an answer on spot. <laughs> but, even if it's just going to get him out of there. Uh, yeah. Even if he's not satisfactory. Yeah. That's not smart enough, is it? <laughs> I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but anyway, maybe we are talking about different kinds of smart. Uh, linguistic intelligence. <laughs> yeah, he's a con man. <laughs> <laughs> you remember the video? I always talk about it. I'm just abusing the powers of the people. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In the bus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so to me, these guys like integrity. And you know, the, the people that were here are people like Jackson Slavwe. We had uh, the likes of uh, Difficulty, the common president. Yeah. We had the likes of Chalakateka. This, I think, was held at the Heritage Party Secretariat mm. of Chalakateka. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, leaders like Savo Imboela. Mm. Yeah. To me, these are names that most of them like integrity. We have people like uh, Harry Sabo- Kalawa. Savo Imboela, mm. on whose side was she during PF's regime? So uh, at some point he was so he was Sabo Imbo like, belongs to a party called NDC. Yes, the National so, Democratic Party. Yes, which was Harry Kalabas. No, that's a different. That's that's, a, that's just democratic. That's democratic party. Yes, Harry, okay. Harry Kalabas was. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, this NDC was, I think, by Chimbakambui. They had their own issues. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I think the main man is Chimbakambui. Okay. Yeah. Oh, had, but he's. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but now he's back mm-hmm. in PF. Because they had their own issues. Where is he right now? He's in PF. I mean, location. Oh, oh yeah, location. I hear that he's sick, and there were some issues that I had, but I might not. Is he still in custody, or maybe? He no, was. he's not. He's not. Eh? No, he's not. Ah, okay. Yeah, uh, he's sick. Was it a Luma? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he was in custody, but I think it's 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 uh, an issue of his health. Health issues. Yeah. But there are also some issues. No, to be honest, he always issues. collapses whenever police issues come up. But <laughs> we will not comment on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, you mean, you know, to me, these leaders like integrity. People like Harry Kalawa. Harry Kalawa left Ed Galongu's government mm. because he said it was a corrupt government. Yeah. But now he's dining with the same Ed Galongu. <laughs> what do they want to do? So, yeah, I, don't know, I don't know. If they, this, move, they are, this so-called movement, what are they calling it? Movement Oppo- for liberation, whatever. <laughs> Opposition movement or whatever. <laughs> yeah, if they are doing it for the sole purpose of just putting pressure on the UPND government right now, I don't know. Maybe they they could be they could have a point. Yeah. If they are doing it because they want to stand for election as a unit, they won't. 
it won't happen. Yeah, no, no, definitely. Yeah. Because they all have egos. They all want to be president. Yeah. They are not just going to give it to Edgar Lungu, who was already president. Yeah. Edgar Lungu is not even the best person to be here addressing us like this. Yeah. When, he ha- when he was the president, when you have crisis, he used to run away. Yeah, but now, ah, <laughs> he loves the media. Yeah, now he wants the media. Yeah. This guy is responsible for closing down some media houses. Yeah. Movie TV. Yeah. Prime TV was closed until the UPND came in power. And now he's crying that they're Post not Post newspaper, you. one of the biggest uh, tabloids that we had, it's yeah. normal because of Edgar Lung. Yeah. Now he wants the media to help. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so Mr. Lungu's uh, speech was rather interesting. Check it out. We have interacted with the people who helped UPND come into government. And a lot of them have told me, Tefo Twala Ibedeti, this is not what we agreed upon. I won't mention names, but they've all come. They're part of us here. They're telling us, no, no, no. Please, we won't wale. They're the ones telling us. The people who supported H8 and UPND are the ones in the forefront telling us that let's get rid of this man. Can we go for an early election? It's you Zambians to tell us now that this movement should be crying for an early election if need be, because it's within your constitutional right to demand for an early election. Yeah. So that's why we are coming to you as a political party. But we ask you to say in, 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 the light, in the light of what we are seeing as Zambians, in the light of what we are experiencing as Zambians, who is this man going to continue up to 2026? Or can we put pressure on him? to get him to accept that an early election is imperative in the country. Dr. Kaunda gave up power in 1991. He was to run for three more years. He himself, President H.H., H., was on record telling people that Lungu has failed. Let's have an early election. Uh, first of all, I don't agree that we could have an ele- early election in Zambia. Yeah? My politics is in Africa. He himself, he was asked to go for an early election. Yeah, no, no. Did I, he even entertain that discussion? Zambia has not civilized to that point. No, we have we, not. We, have, yeah. we are still years behind. Yeah, the dynamics of the calendar times, I was not I mean, there. even America can do that. Yeah. Remember they wanted to impeach Trump? Then mm-hmm. they, want, they wanted yeah. to impeach Biden? Yeah. They also wanted to impeach Bill Clinton? Mm-hmm. It's not easy. Yeah. When Kaunda went for an early election, <laughs> the dynamics are so different. I was not there, but I've read. There was a Mwamba Luchembe. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that cool right yeah, by the way do. we, we, we've done a rebuttal on Mamba Luchembe you can check it out on our rebuttal segments rebuttals will be back later this year we'll have Suilanji in studio doing those uh, with her yeah so we did a rebuttal on Mamba Luchembe as well as Captain Solo uh, who was inspired of course by Mamba Luchembe yeah so having an early election <laughs> you see now because this is a politician Mm-hmm. Edgar Lungu does not care. No. Yeah, Edgar Lungu does not care. So they, they, these are politicians. They might be doing this because they want to cause an uprise. Yeah. Because now the, the ground is sort of fatal, you know. People are complaining everywhere. Uh-huh. So the ground is fatal for an uprising. Yeah. So these people might be doing this to fuel it, to make it, uh, to put it in the minds of Zambians that it is, yes, it is possible for him to go for an ele- early election and it's only possible when you push him to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even though they may only be giving way to one young mouse, Sampa. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he- to start with the PF ticket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Since he's the president of PF now, right? Yeah, he's Ligan. the legit president, yeah. Yeah. So, he did not end there. He went on. Because a lot of you supported UPND, and I'm not saying you were wrong. But you didn't know that there is power in there. <laughs> that power depends on who is handling it. The power that gentleman is using, the same power I had. But did you see what you're seeing now? No. Because I was well brought up. <laughs> now, At the risk of sounding like a UPND supporter, Zambians, this is not a leader that we need. Yeah. These are not leaders that need to rule us at this time. Zambia is a very small country. Well, it's big in land, but we've got less numbers. Actually, we are too few to be poor in this country. So these are not the caliber of leaders that we need. These are supposed to be in the bin. <laughs> we are supposed to have better leaders, not this. This Ed Galungo is the president of this country. He's talking about the shrinking democratic space. Yeah. Well, yes, we could have a drink, shrinking democratic space, and I think the UPND should do better, mm. and we'll call them out mm. when they go wrong. Apparently, but, he was brought up well. But this guy, <laughs> A 
Edgar Lungu, people were afraid to talk. We were afraid to say yeah. things. Yeah. Edgar Lungu didn't have a government. He had a regime. Yes. And quite frankly, what's going on now is nothing compared to, I mean, how many times are we going to talk about how cadres could walk into the central mm. police mm. to say, oh, ban you. <laughs> Telling the police. <laughs> police were afraid of cadres. Yeah. So, so for him to come out and say the democratic space has, the democratic space has shrunken has shrunken mm-hmm. this is not what I was doing when I had the power I mean no, I was these, up are well. jokes. <laughs> you can, these are jokes yeah yeah now throwing jabs at the president's family we should we should are you suggesting in, that he wasn't raised well <laughs> we shouldn't even entertain such people actually yeah yeah if it was up to me these people would have been the bean. Yeah. They will be resting somewhere. <laughs> because this guy actually it's a favor that is a free man. No, no, definitely. Yeah. No, definitely. This guy is supposed to take responsibility of a lot of things. A favor by plus him tightening the laws when he was in, in power. But yeah. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Yeah. But he should actually be thanking Zambians that we're actually entertaining him. Yeah. But this is my opinion. Those who want to support him, they are free. My opinion is that these are not leaders that you can be having in this country. Zambia is look, being looked upon as that shining nation. Yeah, and we in, the, in, in the event leaders. that PF do win, or rather that Edgar Lungu does win, we will delete this episode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you think about the show? Wasn't it a great show? It was. <laughs> yeah, we've come to the end of the show. Wow, already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so again... Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, Monday, political discussions, Wednesdays are for educative segment and Fridays are for Bible talks. So please do subscribe. The show is available 20 hours Central African time on YouTube and the podcast is available on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts and Spotify and will be available on Penga Play soon. All right. We are off to discuss Chofia's trip to the DRC. <laughs> yes, <Bye>. I- <laughs> hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.